Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll go through some of the main newspapers as we have been doing in recent times. Check out what is happening in the news. We'll look at uh, El Mundo, we'll look at El País, we'll have a look at the state broadcaster as well and a couple of other newspapers. Then at the end of the video, we'll go through some of the comments in the comment section and see what is happening there. There was a fair bit of debate on yesterday's video in the comment section, so we'll check that out. Now, I'll be putting out a video tomorrow in English with the news here in Spain, so stay tuned for that. But today we'll look at the press in Spanish and I'll see if I can give you a rough translation of what is going on in the country. Now let's get straight into the news and we'll go to El Mundo and there's a fair bit of talk today about this diplomatic problem that Spain has with Russia at the moment or the European Union has with Russia apparently. We can see here the main article on the left. Diplomacia, el gobierno ve en la injerencia rusa por los presos del proces un ataque a la UE. And the translation here would be that the government sees some type of Russian interference because of what they said yesterday about the politicians that are in prison in Catalonia. And they are saying that this is an attack on the European Union. So a bit of a diplomatic problem between Spain and Russia. We saw the European Minister for Foreign Affairs, who happens to be from Catalonia, visit Russia the other day, or maybe it was yesterday. And he mentioned something about the Russian opposition leader who is currently in prison and said that it wasn't very democratic. And apparently the Russians retaliated, saying that what happened in Spain a couple of years ago regarding the Catalonian elections and the fact that there are politicians in prison in Spain wasn't very democratic either. And apparently now Spain is saying that this is an attack on the European Union. So a bit of a diplomatic problem, and it doesn't come at a very good time, because apparently yesterday the reason for the European minister's visit to Russia was in order to purchase doses of the Russian vaccine Sputnik, I think it is called. So I don't really think the European Union needs to be having problems with Russia at the moment if they want to get their hands on that vaccine and, of course, get the European vaccination program back on track. Now, we'll leave El Mundo now. We'll go to El Pace. We'll click on that and see what's happening there. And we'll scroll up and we'll see that there's a big picture of Jeff Bezos. Como el hombre que cambió el comercio da un paso a un lado a los 57 años. So how the man who changed commerce is stepping aside at the age of 57. And there's various articles here talking about that transition in the company Amazon. And we'll focus on this one here on the left. España en cara ya el final de la primera fase de la vacunación. So Spain is coming to the end of the first phase of vaccination. And we'll also have a look at this article just below. We'll click on that one about the AstraZeneca vaccine. And we can see here la vacuna de AstraZeneca solo se administrará a personas entre 18 y 55 años. España se alinea con los países europeos más conservadores. El lote que llegue este fin de semana irá para sanitarios de segunda línea. So the AstraZeneca vaccine will only be given to people between the ages of 18 and 55. And Spain is aligning itself with the most conservative European countries. The batch of doses that is arriving this weekend will go to second-line health workers. So the AstraZeneca vaccine back in the press again today. I mentioned this yesterday that they were talking about not giving this vaccine to people over the age of 65. Well, yesterday afternoon they announced that it's only going to be for people between the ages of 18 and 55. Not really sure what the reason for this is. I saw various comments in the comment section saying it's because they don't have enough doses. The European Union is trying to rectify its mistake with regard to these vaccines. Of course, we all know there was a bit of an issue last week between the European Union and the company AstraZeneca. And now we have this final piece of news saying that people under the age of 18 and people over the age of 55 won't be getting this vaccine. So again, probably one of the main reasons why Europe is now doing deals with the Russians and trying to get their hands on Sputnik. Now we'll leave El País, go to El Confidencial, see what is happening there. We'll get past the advertisements. We'll go down to the health data. We won't have a look at the map and graph because the information hasn't been updated since the 4th of February, so we won't look at that. But we'll scroll down and see if there's any news that catches our attention. And the main article of Confidencial is going with here is Los Ministros del PSOE marquen territorio a Podemos en feminismo, vivienda y pensiones. So the PSOE or socialist ministers are marking their territory with Podemos when it comes to feminism, housing and pensions. So again, problems in the coalition government, as we can see here, various ministers on both sides marking their territories. 
They can't seem to agree on various topics when it comes to feminism, housing and pensions. Podemos, it seems, is a little bit too radical even for the socialists with some of the policies that they are putting forward. And there was a little bit of controversy this week because of a transgender law that Podemos is trying to put forward, but the PSOE or the socialist government doesn't agree with them on that. And as we can see, they also don't agree when it comes to housing and the pension system. Now, we'll leave El Confidencial. We'll go to the state broadcaster RTVE, see what is happening there. A lot of news here about Catalonia and the elections that they have coming up on the 14th of this month. Three articles here related to the election campaign. We'll pass those over and we'll click on this article here about the foreign minister and her response to the Russians. So the headline, Leia responde al ministro de exteriores ruso, en España no hay presos políticos. So Spain's foreign minister Leia responds to the Russian foreign minister by saying, in Spain there are no political prisoners. And we'll scroll down a little bit and see what she says here. She says something important here to the Russians when she says that en España no hay presos políticos, hay políticos presos. So in Spain, there are no political prisoners. There are only politicians who are in prison. And I think that would be the best way to translate that sentence. No hay presos políticos, hay políticos presos. And the foreign minister here in Spain pointing out to the Russians that there aren't political prisoners in Spain, only politicians that are in prison. Now, this is still quite a controversial topic here in Spain. I don't really want to talk too much about it. I don't want to open up a can of worms. But I'm having a little bit of trouble with the semantics of what the foreign minister said. Maybe you guys can help me decipher her words in the comment section below. Now we'll leave the state broadcaster. We'll have a look at one more newspaper, El Diario. There was something that caught my attention there about the vaccination plan. We'll have a look at it here. España necesita cerca de dos millones de pinchazos a la semana para alcanzar los objetivos de vacunación. So Spain needs to administer about two million injections a week to reach its vaccination targets. So there we go. Spain needs to vaccinate 2 million people a week to get the vaccination plan back on track. And I'm a little bit skeptical about this because up until now, only 2 million people have received vaccines in this country since the start of the vaccination plan. So 2 million a week? I don't think so. Now we'll leave the news there and we'll go into the comment section, see what is happening there. We'll have a look at this one here from John. Hi, Stuart. I'm 74 tomorrow and at 11 a.m. I will be getting the AstraZeneca vaccine at my doctor's in the UK. By the end of the day, 11 million in the UK will have had the jab, of which a large percentage will have been AstraZeneca. Next week, they start invites for the 65 to 70 age group. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment and happy birthday and good to see that you are getting that vaccine today. And you mentioned in your comment that by the end of today, 11 million people in the UK will have received vaccines. As I just said, here in Spain, 2 million. So it just goes to show how far we are behind countries like the UK, countries like Israel, countries like the United States that have been serious with their vaccination plans from the beginning. I saw on the news last night that in places like New York, there were huge queues of people lining up at football stadiums, I think, in order to get the vaccine. Nothing like that going on here in Spain. As I said before, the European Union is now doing deals with Russia in order to get the vaccination plan back on track. So things not looking good here. But as I said, good to see that the UK is taking the vaccination program seriously. One here from Alison. What happened to yesterday's video? I went on and it said it had been taken down. Yeah, Alison, thanks for the comment. You're right, that video was taken down, not by YouTube. Some people thinking that YouTube took the video down. I made a mistake and deleted the video. And I spent about 30 minutes yesterday talking to YouTube, trying to get it back because I didn't want to lose a video. As I said, it was my fault. I clicked the wrong button. I wanted to delete another video, but I deleted that one by mistake. And sorry if you were watching it and it got deleted halfway through. But with a little bit of luck, it should be back up again soon. One here from Waltman333. I'm wondering if the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be available in Spain. Yeah, Walt, thanks for the comment. I think that the European Union is also negotiating with Johnson & Johnson to try to secure this vaccine. I think it's called the Janssen vaccine and you only need one jab instead of two. I think that's the vaccine that we are talking about here. But I don't know what the exact situation is regarding this vaccine. I know that it's one of many that the European Union is looking at. And as we saw before, we need 2 million vaccines a month in order to get the plan back on track. So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, the Sputnik vaccine, we're trying to get vaccines from everywhere at the moment. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.